The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Daryl Martin. All right, folks. Welcome here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin. And if you have any questions, obviously it is a uh, quiet day in the markets. Feel free to give me a call. Uh, you can reach me right here at 877 927 6648. Again, that's 877 927 6648. If you're outside the United States, you can give us a call at 727 445 one zero four four and uh, as I do each and every day I do a quick market recap of course there's a few that uh, there's not a whole lot to say but uh, we can go through and look at it and um, just some commentary about what if the market does open up tomorrow what should you do so be some good questions to go through and ponder a little bit today because uh, you got to be ready for that it's gonna be an interesting day if they do open uh, the floors back up so looking on over and checking out where is everything well, the S&P, and I think I'll go ahead and pull up a chart just so that we can sort of see this overnight session, what's been going on, uh, because as you may or may not know, the futures have been um, trading at night, just not during the day. So sort of interesting. But uh, let's go on over and uh, pull that up. It's really, I find it you know, odd that they have to close everything down because they can trade everything electronically. And... You go in and, you know, they, they decided to go ahead and shut it down because the banks aren't there and everything else. And, you know, so, but uh, you can trade electronically. <laughs> There's all these earnings coming out. And um, so you don't have the ability to go in and trade on those. And there's other things happening in the world. Of course, you can't trade on that. Um, and it's just, it's really interesting. They've actually pushed back like the consumer sentiment report. And Friday we have, you know, jobs. Tomorrow we have jobs numbers coming out. And so there's some big numbers coming out. Also, this is the end of the month we're coming up on tomorrow. And a lot of the mutual funds will close out their, their years, actually, tomorrow. So it's going to mess them up a little bit. And, you know, several other companies, they, they close a lot of things down and settle things up at the end of October. So with it being, you know, there's supposed to be a lot of transactions happening. And um, they only have one day left to do it all if they open it back up, if they want to get it all done before the end of the month. Well... Over here on the S&P, we can see that the S&P went ahead and it basically traded down, and then it pulled on back up and actually had a little bit of a gain um, overnight. So the S&P has actually moved up from not only the you could call close of yesterday, like the you know the tick I guess you got, and then um, and all, but also if you go on back and you look at Friday, it's actually closed higher now than it was on Friday before the markets just basically shut down during normal trading hours, and. So that's one thing to look at. Let's go ahead and check out. So that it, it filled the gap, but you couldn't really, really trade it. I mean, you could have traded it if you traded it overnight last night, but you know, not your normal gap fill trade, of course. And uh, if we go on over and we look at the Nasdaq and to see how that is doing, well, we're going back here. This is Tuesday's close right here, and it almost already filled its gap. So I sort of feel cheated a little bit because I wanted to go in. I I was planning on trading the gap on Monday. And I uh, couldn't trade it. And I was like, all right, well, hey, it's still there. I can trade it on Tuesday. And then it, you know. So we'll see what happens tonight if it pulls back down. Gives us another chance at that gap fill play. But all the indices sort of pushing on up over in the overnight session. So you're definitely, even if you're a stock trader, okay, you need to have access to futures data. And, you know, you can get that through uh, Ninja Trader. I, I, if you need help on getting free access to data, let me know. You can email me. And uh, you know my contact information right there is on the website. Or you know, you know, Thinker Swim has you know a great platform you can check out as well. So you got to fund it to get live data, of course. Uh, but I can help you out with you know getting even without funding um, with demo accounts and things like that. But you need access to futures data, and this amazes me when I talk to traders. They're like, I'm, I'm a stock trader. I don't need futures data. Well, there's one of the reasons that a lot of times futures traders are considered you know the best traders because they can view the world on a dozen charts okay they can look at currencies they can look at interest rates right like the bond markets they can go in and they can look at indices they can look at international indices they can look at metals they can look at energies they can look at agriculturals they can look at livestock okay 
they can look at everything in the world and how it interacts. When you look at 20 stock charts, you're seeing 20 different stocks. Now, you may be seeing a sector, okay? So pharmaceuticals, you know, or, you know, uh, you know, different sectors that you may be looking at, technology, things like that. So you can see different sectors, but you're still looking at stocks for the most part. I mean, there are the occasional ETFs like GLD and things like that. And there's, you know, a couple ETFs on Forex, but you don't see any of the overnight action that happened. You just see when it opened and during the regular hours, but the markets are moving 24 hours a day. And so with the futures, you know, looking at the Globex data feeds, you can see the 24-hour day movement, you know, minus the couple hours there where it closes down for everything to settle up. And you need to be able to see the world, okay? So, because things impact stocks. Currency impacts stocks. I think everybody would agree with that, right? Bonds impact stocks. So, if things get really expensive, like corn and soybeans, and you're trading, you know, Kellogg's or whatever, okay? You know, not Kellogg's, but if you're trading, <laughs> it's Kellogg's zero. Um, you go in and, you know, if you're trading, you know, Kraft or different companies like that that are out there and you're going in and you're looking at all these different companies and things that they're connected to, they're connected to things that are out there in the futures market. And you need to know what's happening in the futures market. Well, what if you're just a Forex trader? Okay. Well, maybe you are just a Forex trader. Well, you need to know about bonds. Okay. Bonds are going to affect the dollar. Okay. But uh, here's one of the most important things is if you're trading Forex, spot market. You're not a futures Forex trader. You're a spot market trader. And a lot of guys go out there and they'll trade on MT4, MetaTrader 4. And, uh, you know, it's an okay platform, and it's a cheap platform, and it's distributed everywhere, and it's basically free. Um, but there's one issue. You don't get other data in it, but one of the most important pieces of data, you don't get the futures Forex data, the exchange data. You may get your broker's volume on that Forex pair, but if you want to get the futures volume, okay, where the big money is at right there on the floor making those decisions, you know, then you want to have the futures forks data. So you get the futures forks volume. Even though you may just be looking at the future spot or the forks spot price, you want the futures forks volume to be able to check that out and see how that corresponds to the market. Because everything is about price and volume, period. Okay? Price and volume. It's always price and volume. So when you're looking at anything, it comes down to price and volume. That's what we're reflecting is what actually happening in the market right now or over any given period of time. But you need to get access to that. If you don't know how, let me know. I'll be glad to help you. But that's a step you need to make in your trading. And um, so we got the NASDAQ. It's pushing on up. We got the S&P pushing on up on the overnight session. And looking on over at the Dow, looks like the same thing. It went ahead and it filled in that gap already um, from last Friday. So the Dow's actually exceeded the gap there. And in the overnight trading, right there at the end, just went ahead and made a nice strong push right above it. And looking on over, we have the Russell. On the Russell, we go in. Got some weird action going on right there. But um, right here we have, it has not quite filled its gap yet. So the small caps got a little bit more to fill that gap. And um, again, it's all going to come down to the overnight trading session, which you need futures data really to see the, the movement in the futures trading. And it's like the S&P, everything's trying to hold that level. And uh, they're waiting on a, you know multiple things um, that are coming out fundamentally. So of course we have all these job reports coming out this week. We have the elections coming up, right? We have the fiscal cliff. We have the um, cap of the debt ceiling. Like all that is happening, you know, here in the next basically 60 days. So uh, it is going to be a and, and of course you got Christmas, right, with spending and everything else. So it is, it's just going to be a potent time. And we have all these earnings that have come out. Now, I think there's over a dozen companies of the, ma the, of the majors that have actually delayed their earnings releases until after the floors open back up. So I would think if you are if you have really good reports, you'd probably want to wait until, and you have good reports, good forecast, everything, you beat expectations, you'd probably want to wait until after the bell opens back up because you want people to remember and see that action to drive your stock higher. If you have bad reports, you probably want to go ahead and release that while the market's closed. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I don't have any idea why somebody with bad reports would want to release their earnings while the market's open. If they can, you know, hey, we released it on Monday, it's Wednesday, people forgot about that and they're focusing on this, then uh, that could maybe stunt the uh, the bad news on the effect on that stock. Who knows? You know, of course, I know the fundamentally everybody's going to come in and the big funds are going to come in and make plays based on it. But it's not the same as doing it right at the second when it happened, when you have all these other companies and all these earnings built up at the same time. And, you know, as stated, uh, a lot of the... Uh, announcements that were scheduled to come out have all been delayed and pushed back and I'll go through uh, do a quick uh, recap now that we've went over the uh, just sort of the indices and their price action there 
Uh, we'll go ahead and look at some of the other markets and see uh, where they're at right now. And let's see, we got our, if we go over to our ags, we got soybeans up 11 and a half points. So they are moving a little bit today. And our corn is up just uh, three points. So barely moving corn, pretty flat on the day. And let's see here, we got uh, oil is up 22 cents right now. And if we look over at natural gas, December contract there, it is down almost 3% on the day. So a pretty big move there in natural gas on the, again, the December contract. And then silver uh, is up about a third, basically pretty flat, um, up 0.115, which is 0.36%. And looking over at copper, it's about the exact same as silver. And then checking out the other metal, we got the gold, the nice shiny metal, all right? That one is up uh, three points on the day. So metal's barely moving. Looking over at our currencies, dollar has been getting strong, or actually weaker. Dollar's been getting weaker against pretty much all the major currency pairs out there as the indices are showing some strength in the overnight session. And uh, last night we saw a lot of the international indices rise as well. So the majority of the international indices actually went up overnight. And I'm sure that's what brought most of the U.S. indices with it, sort of in that wake, that pulling it in there. And euro dollar there up 71 pips, pound dollar up 55, Aussie dollar up 37 pips. And we got the U.S. yen and down 20 pips, the U.S. franc down 51, and the U.S. Canadian down six. So um, a lot of strength there that we're seeing over in Europe and um, Britain on the currency pairs. And, of course, a lot of that being led by strength in the international indices. And uh, the U.S. market's just not open for us to see what's happening, and the big reports aren't really coming out. Um, so let's go ahead and check out what reports we have had and uh, this week, which has not been much, and um, go in and look at what else we got going on. Um, here in the U.S., we had, let's see, I'm looking at a couple that most of them are so small, they have very little impact. Last, uh, let's see, tonight, actually. Okay, so last night we had Aussie Dollar, that's their new HI. HIA new home sales. There's not. It's not really a projection number, so it really had little to no impact on the market. And um, let's see here. We had the personal spending yesterday, and then if we go on over and look at today, what's come out and what's due to come out today, um, the yen. So sort of in focus here. Let's go ahead and pull up the yen, and you can see some pretty major uh, movements right there. I'll break down a little bit tighter. Go down to five minute charts, and you can see just a massive drop right there. U.S. gaining. Or a U.S. losing right there ground against the yen, the yen getting a lot of strength. Just a massive, massive move. I did talk about yesterday having you know a very possible strong um, yen play coming up, and you know that's that's showing right now. So you can see this this big move that we had right here, and this was uh, basically 1:45 uh, Eastern, 12:45 Central, and this is where they released their monetary policy statement. They had their overnight rate, and it came in at expectations. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about more about that when you get back right back after this commercial break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I just want to go ahead and make sure that I let you know it just came out news release. They are opening the floor tomorrow. Yes. So uh, trading resumes and uh, New York Stock Exchange floor is open. They said the building was not damaged and... Um, they are going to go ahead and get it going. So uh, look forward to uh, markets opening back up. They'll open up, of course, tonight on the futures market, and they'll open on in tomorrow. And that press release just came out over on the uh, New York Stock Exchange website. So, and I got the link right up there, so you can check that out. That's nyse.com under news releases. Okay? And uh, so, anyways, we got uh, everything back up and running. And uh, i got a question real quick over here coming in. Uh, looks like we got a caller on the dollar yen. So uh, go ahead. It looks like we got what? Al from Tampa? Um, Is this Al? Okay. Um, actually, it was the Japan 225 I was looking at last night. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. On the scanner, and I came up with a buy and a sell, and I didn't do either one. But uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was interested in it, but I, you know, I felt like I didn't know enough about it. Okay. Uh, now, is that something that you can, when the scanner brings up a buy and a sell, is it stupid to do both of them, or better to go one or the other? It really depends on what you're doing. Okay. So, like, let's say last night you were trading right before the news announcement. Uh huh. So, you know, like whenever the US Yen came out last night and then you get in say like you know five or ten minutes before the announcement that's right. a very good good time to do it what you're calling about is a straddle so when, okay. you're, when you're we're buying the one above and selling the one below 
And uh, the thing is, because on a straddle, you need the market to move far enough for the trade to be profitable. Okay. So, for instance, like over here, I'll go ahead and bring it up on um, the Tiger TV here. And show you, let's say if I want to do a straddle on the euro dollar. All right. And I'm looking at my, um, you know, or, I mean, you could pick really any market you wanted to. Uh, we could do corn. We could do soybeans. Y'all do corn. This one's right here. So it's a short, easy one. Um, and so if I'm looking over here at corn, then what I can see is, you know, it'd have to move, you know, 1.4 up to be break even or 3 down to be break even. Okay. So right. if I'm doing a straddle, I need it to move a combination of both. So I need to move like four, needs to move up 4.4 points or down 4.4 to be break even. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if it moves past that, then I make a profit. So I really only want to do a straddle whenever I think the market's going to move pretty fast um, and pretty far. So, uh, so but it's a, I, I literally do it all the time. So I love doing straddles, and um, I do them pretty much almost always around news. So that, that's wow. not a bad idea at all, as long as you have a reason for expecting the market to move. And then uh -huh. you can also go over and um, use you know the deviation levels um, in conjunction with that. So, because you want to have an expectation of how far you think it's going to move when you do it, because you know, let's say you know, I know it has to move four points or whatever. Um, when you're doing that, then you need to, like I said, have that expectation of, well, will it move at least four and a half points? Because if it won't, then you know that would be a bad idea. So, by going over here and we look up, you know, uh, now of course you wouldn't have that exactly on the the, the two twenty five, but like on a US yen, now you can still trade the two twenty five during that announcement, obviously because it would affect it quite a bit. Um, but you just you have to have an expectation of movement, and you need that expectation to be at least um, at the same level that, uh, or at least more than, really not the same, but more than um, how far you'd expect the market to move itself. Right. So as long as you have an expectation for the market to move, you have a support resistance line or a deviation move, or you know whatever, then that would be a great trade. So if I looked at corn right now, and you know just to add this, you could apply this to any market, but uh, we're saying you know the market basically going to have to move four points up or down and then I go in and I pull up the corn you know futures contract and I, I do the 225 it's just obviously it's not open right now um, but I go in here and let's see here we'll open corn and then you know look at you know sort of like where it's trading at the moment 7 you know 39 okay all right and then I go over to the deviation levels and I go okay well what are the deviation levels on corn well corn 739 um, Right now, I'd expect it to move up to 742, so that would only put, I guess, a half deviation. Um, so I really wouldn't have, I'd have to expect it to move up to 747, and if it's at 739 right now, I'd have to have four points of movement. That's a move up to 743. So if I do get to my one deviation mark of 747, then you know I'd make about three or four points, So which would give me about a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. That wouldn't be a horrible trade, um, but you know, you do like on corn. You do, of course, like when the ag reports are coming out. Whenever the you know the agricultural department releases all their numbers, right. um, and then you know on currencies, like whenever um, currency announcements are coming out, or on that country's indices, you know, with the U.S. 500 when we have U.S. Or like jobs reports, or right. the 225, of course, whenever you have you know yen reports and stuff like that coming out, can have a big impact on it. But uh, no, it's it's a great choice. If you want to stay right there, I can answer some other questions for you as well. Great. There, there. We'll be right back after right. this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, checking in now, are you still on the line with us? Uh, yes. Awesome. All right. Great. Um, I just want to go over and answer any questions and also just point a few things out for you on the scanner that sort of helps with that. Okay. Um, so here's an example. We have Aussie dollar. So there's a little more, you know, choices with the Aussie dollar here. And uh, I narrowed down the choices. But um, you go in here and let's say you're looking at a straddle like tonight at uh, 8.30 Eastern. We have the building approvals report coming out of Australia. It's a, usually a pretty big market moving event. And uh, so what you can see on here is just combining the break even distance. Like one of them is trading on par. Okay. And looking at the other one, it's trading a little bit above, about 10 pips above. So you need, basically need to move up 10 pips total in order to be able to regain your profit. Uh, and so, and you can literally click on here to draw your straddle as well, which is sort of helpful. If you click on both of them, then it'll draw the straddle on there for you. And uh, you know, basically, you can pick different ones until you find the one that you know meets you know your requirements. But they'll let you see the risk reward graph right there on the chart. Um, so as you're, as you're using it, have you been able to sort of help? Has it helped you narrow down some of the choices on the thing? I know you just started uh, you just started using the scanner, right? Uh, right. Um, it, it's, it's been helpful. Um, I guess my question is, can you go back and look at what what happened after the contract is closed? Uh, well, here there is something you can do. I mean, uh, I'll show you this because I do that sometimes as well. And there's one way to do it. So let me show you. Uh, but you sort of got to be ready for it, okay? Okay. Like, you have to do a step, one step. Uh, is you can go in here and let's say, you know, you want to follow 
a footsie or, you know, whatever, okay? And you're looking at the spreads. Is you can open the chart. And let, let me bring my live account up. It'll work a little faster, better. Um, bring up my chart here. So if we go in and look at this on the FTSE, on the bull spreads. And I, I pull up like US 500 and stuff, but obviously they're not open right now. And you can open the chart up on the spread. If you leave the chart open, then you'll actually have that data. Okay? Oh, okay. So what I'll do is I'll go in and if there's some spreads that I'm looking at, I may literally open like 10 charts and just put them to the side, you know, if you have multiple right. monitors or, or minimize them, okay? And then I can open them up at the end of the day. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can even go in here and you can export the chart as an image. So it'll basically save, you know, the chart as an image for you um, on right. the screen there, which is pretty helpful. Uh, but that's that's about the you can't really go back and pull like historical spreads, but you can save the charts and it'll save it as a file on your computer. Once you save it, then you know you can look, you can basically keep a record of them. But you have to open the uh, the charts up. So I mean, you could literally go through and open every one of them if you wanted to, and then just look at how all of them reacted throughout the day. And and the, one of the nice things is in the chart they actually tell you what contract it is up here at the top. Mm -hmm. So you know, so, so it's FTSE 100 December 5800 to 6000 expiring at 4 p.m. And um, and I just you know I drag that back and just let it you know move on throughout the day. So that way you can sort of historically look at how did it move, and then I'll bring up and I'll actually compare um, one contract to another contract, like to the underlying market. So I may actually pull up the FTSE, you know, where I may go in, I may pull up the um, you know the Nikkei, or I may pull up you know, the S and P or the Euro Dollar and compare the two side by side, because what it's really helpful for is learning how the two move together in tandem. You know. Uh -huh. So, because you're trying to sort of, you know, and they move, I mean, they move pretty much in sync. They have to get sort of in the money, but at the same price to start being like at a pure delta of one. And you don't have to get like that deep into it. But it is helpful to open the charts up on there to do that. Okay. And um, let's see here. Some other things that can be really helpful to you is, let's see. Uh, obviously, you know, you got timed expiration. You got break even distance. You got risk. Um, you can go in. Let's say you don't want a short term contract. You know, you can shrink that down. And they'll get rid of any like 60 minute contracts, you know, one hour contracts. Um, and then the hedging is something you can do. I don't know if you trade the outright FTSE futures or not, but you can hedge with that. Um, and now on the FTSE futures, since they don't actually trade in US dollars, then you would do um, a hedge strategy. We built it in here. You can't really see it right now because it's not open. Let me put the Germany 30 because this will be a good example. Okay, so obviously, they, you know, the DAX trades in the in euros. Okay. Right. And so what you can do is it says hedge using the master spread. So a lot of times people want to hedge because they want a lot bigger profit potential on a trade. Okay? And uh, then the box, because they think there's going to be some massive move. And so the master spread is always going to be the widest spread, like the 400-point wide spread right here on the DAX. And so you can buy that, and it'll be trading right at where the underlying market's trading. So there'll be very, very little difference ever on a master spread. And uh, you can also find all of them up here under master spreads on the watch list. So the hedging strategy is very, very cool. And a lot of times you can make money on both sides because you buy and you sell. And then it moves up. You sell out your master spread that falls back down. And your hedge actually ends up making money on the trade. But there's a lot of different things you can do with it. But the, the simple thing is, instead of going through here, and you know this is why I actually had it built for my own trading, is because to actually do your analysis, you'd be looking at what three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen contracts trying to you know find the right spread, right. and uh, you know by the time you made your decision, it's too late to even find it, and this will you know pull it up for you here in a couple seconds. So now, do you have any questions about this Nadex, how it moves, how it works, anything like that? That uh, that answers it for me for the moment. Awesome. All right. Well, um, if you have any questions, you can definitely, as you know, always call in. And then you can also email me right here in the help desk inside the members area there. Great. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for calling in now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So uh, and um, I was talking about the uh, box spread scanner that we have there that you can um, take advantage of. It has a, a live data feed from the Nadex Exchange, and it pulls in all of the spreads for you at once. And so it'll go in, and it'll pull literally every single spread on Nadex, and it'll automatically calculate how long you have till expiration, and then it'll look at both the buy and the sell sides, it'll look at the break-even distance, how far does it have to move to be break-even, it'll look at your risk on the trade, your reward, your risk-reward ratio potential, um, and even if you want to use what I call the ultimate hedge strategy and hedge the trade, exactly how to do that is built into the scanner as well, and it's very helpful. So once you learn how to trade Nadex, what's gonna happen immediately is you're gonna go, 
Um, which trade should I, which spread should I choose? Okay, so once you get down the basics of a box spread, then you get stuck on that question. And that's sort of where, uh, you know, this comes into play is because it helps you a lot in figuring out, you know, the best spreads to choose um, when you're looking at different markets and things like that. And uh, if I go over and pull in, you know, one of the other things, and this is probably, I think, one of the most valuable pieces, is it'll help you see if you have very similar um, risk and reward scenarios. And uh, so, like instance right here, like the euro dollar, there's two spreads. Um, both of them expire in 78 minutes, okay? Both of them only have to move three pips to be at break even. Both of them only have basically $10 of risk. But one of them can make a, has the potential to make $100 more than the other. So there'd be absolutely no reason to do this trade at all. So why do this trade when your profit is capped when you could do this trade when your profit is you know has much more potential on it? So what are another $100 for no additional risk? You're giving nothing up. Uh, but if you're going through and you're trying to, you know, hey, I need to go short the Aussie dollar right now, you know, and you're taking, you know, trying to do a trade, uh, you may not have time to go through and evaluate every, you don't have time to evaluate every spread. You got to make your decision. And so this helps you find it very quick because you're like, hey, I want to go short the Aussie dollar. And here are my three choices. That has 17 minutes. I don't want that one. Okay, these two have 77 minutes. And same time, same break even, same risk, more reward. I have a potential to make $17 for every dollar at risk. Okay, that's my trade. And as soon as you picked out your trade, you literally just go in and click on the sell button and it'll open the ticket for you directly in the Nadex platform. So now you don't even have to go over back to the Nadex platform and find the spread. You just click it, opens it up, and you update quantity. If you want to change the price, you can change that, hit place order, and it's done. So basically, Nadex, in my opinion, is the best way to trade uh, because you have capped risk and you don't have to have capped reward. You can do the head strategy if you don't want to have capped reward. But you have capped risk. You have insane leverage. Okay, you're talking about controlling 10,000 units of Aussie dollar, okay, for basically 10 bucks. So let's say if you want to do 100,000 units of the Aussie dollar, then you'd go in here and do 10 of them. And you're talking about a $90 margin, okay? Also a $90 risk. And that's like having control of being short the Aussie dollar, 100,000 units of the Aussie dollar. And um, for only a $90 margin requirement and only a $90 risk. So no matter how far the Aussie dollar moves up, you can't lose more than $90 on the entire trade. And as long as it goes, it expires below 1.0361, okay, which is, you know, not too far, but uh, it's just a couple pips literally below where it's at right now. As long as it expires below 1.0361 where you're selling the spread, see 1.0361, then you make money. So, but... If it expires above 1.0370, you can't lose more than 90. And uh, one of the cool things is uh, spreads aren't like binaries, okay? They're not like all or nothing. So let's say we sell it at 1.0361 and it expires where it's at right now, 1.0364, okay? Well, then we'd actually only lose 60, or actually, um, let's see here, we would lose, actually, we'd only lose $30. So we'd only lose $30 on the trade because we sold it at 1.036 and you know if we bought it back at let's see 1.03 we'll just say you know seven eight whatever uh then that's our risk so our risk is literally only the difference where we buy and we sell so binary is it has to be above or has to be below the strike at expiration you can get out before then but at expiration it has to be above or below on a spread it doesn't have to be above or below etc basically your your risk or reward is determined by the difference where you buy and where you sell. And so let's say the market does, you know, go up to 1.039 above the ceiling. Okay, you can also see the ceiling right here. And if it goes above that, then they're gonna settle it at 1.037. So that's why your risk is capped. Okay. But if it goes up to 1.03, you know, six five and or it just stays at 1.0365, I'm only gonna lose four ticks. Okay. I'm only gonna lose forty dollars on ten contracts. I'll get my other I'll get fifty back out of the ninety I put up. So that's at expiration. So it's not all or nothing. But if you can just remember, it's really simple. This is no different than, I mean, you can trade the Aussie dollar right now on, almost on par. I mean, you're talking two pips different. And so if you went in and chose this trade, let me show you what it looks like on an actual chart here. I'll pull it up. And we'll come back over. We'll look at some of our fundamentals too before we wrap up here. But uh, Aussie dollar. And we got, look at our spread. 1.0170 to 1.0370. So we go over here and we can use our drawing tools. Right here at the bottom, go to rectangle, 1.0370, and it goes way down. And I can edit it, you know, 
click on here and edit the drawing. And 1.037 oh and 1.03 or what 1.0170. So a pretty big spread there. And uh, make sure I got that right. Yep, yeah, 1.0170. So now you can make money. You gotta shrink the chart a lot. <laughs> all the way down to 1.0170, all right? That's pretty sweet, that's a lot of movement. So I really don't expect the Aussie dollar course to move that far, but that's the profit potential in the trade itself. And so, you know, don't worry about risk be, or profit being capped, okay? That's that's a massive profit. If you capture that profit, then you are not gonna be upset with yourself at all. And uh, if you look at, I mean, right now we can sell this at 1.0361 and it's trading at 1.0363. So, I mean, we're talking only two pips of premium built in right there. The FX has some of the lowest premiums. It's great. Um, but 1.0363. And since I'm selling that, what happens, you know, go over here and we'll zoom back in. If the Aussie dollar were to spike back up here, because we could easily, I mean, this would be like sort of where you'd want to set a stop loss if you're, you know, going short the Aussie, right? Because right here, since the last high, and uh, it's where you'd feel probably the most safe, the tightest you can get it. And that's basically right at 1.0370. And, well, what if it goes up to 1.0371 and, you know, kicks you out of your trade? Well, if you're doing the Aussie dollar spread, it could go up as high as it wanted to. But let's just say it goes up to 1.0371, 7.2, 7.374, whatever. Maybe up here to 1.03, you know, 7.8. And then comes back down before expiration. So long as it does that, then you're actually profitable on the trade. And you can sort of see why I call this a uh, box spread. When you draw it on the chart, it actually looks like a box. So it expires at, you know, 3 o'clock. So it expired, you know, obviously just right around the corner here. But I can go in and change this to, let's see, what, 2, 22, let's see, what would be, uh, 12, 13, 14, so 14. <laughs> Got to get my military time going. And uh, put that in, and that'll extend it out and sort of show me... Uh, I'll, basically, I'll see when the box is expiring. And of course you can add in settings on your charts to extend out the chart a little bit further to the right. But I now have complete confidence that I will not lose more than $9 on this trade no matter what. And if it settles at where I sold it at, I get all my money back. So, that, I mean, that's not a bad deal at all. I mean, there, there is no better way to trade Forex or futures than using Nadex spreads or binaries simply because it takes care of the risk management for you. It eliminates the whipsaws for you. Um, you have awesome leverage margin, everything working in your favor, but with the risk management also working in your favor. So it's sort of nice to have leverage working in your favor on one side, but margin working on that on the other side. And uh, and then uh, one of the questions over the den is uh, TOS does not have all the international indices. So I actually, um, I use NinjaTrader. So, um, and that's probably my one of my preferred platforms. I love using NinjaTrader. And you can go in here and get a connection. Um, if you want to email me, I can tell you how to get access to all the indices and get them really either cheap or free. So uh, you can email me at dmartin at tfnn.com. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up with that. And it's just, uh, there's some cool deals out there. But uh, it's probably one of my favorite platforms. It's really built for futures and forex and you know stock traders. And uh, I enjoy using it a lot. Um, I love, uh, now TOS, bar none, the best for options out there, in my opinion. There's nothing better. I don't think that's, I think that's anybody's opinion. But uh, for a lot of the things that I like to do, for, especially for getting tighter margins and, and things like that, there are a couple other options out there. Uh, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, thanks for staying right there. And uh, checking a couple other things, go ahead and do a wrap-up right now on the fundamentals. Go ahead and talk about that. Let me pull it on up for you. So we had the uh, USGN reports come in last night, and obviously, as you see, a major move on that. Would have been a great time to do a straddle on that. So anytime there's that news, you definitely want to be taking advantage of it. And uh, then uh, Draghi came out and started talking around 4 o'clock. And so as we can see over here... Um, that was, a, I guess, a positive move there in the market at 3 o'clock, and the euro dollar sort of moved up strong ever since then. And that did follow a couple other small reports. Uh, but after that, obviously, the um, USEN press conference, so go back over to the USEN. And uh, that didn't have a big impact, really, was their statement that came out that made the massive impact. And then uh, Italy had a uh, positive bond auction, better than expected, despite all the political turmoil they got going on. It actually came in at 492 and uh, that probably be one of the strongest uh, things that led to the rally that uh, finished up at 6.12 a.m. Um, Eastern time yesterday there. And so we can go over and check that out and see that right here around 6 o'clock, that's when um, the Italian bond auction sort of finished off and everything flattened out for a little bit. We got a little bit more of a bump after that. And then moving on forward right here, let's see what else we got. We have a couple of small speeches and things coming out. Nothing really big uh, today. And then uh, moving on forward to the Aussie dollar, we got building approvals tonight at 8.30, so Eastern time. So stick that one on your calendar. That could be a time to do like a straddle. Um, and then looking over at tomorrow. So what do we got on the lineup? We got the Canadian GDP, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that obviously could have a pretty big impact Eastern time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. 
and just looking at a couple other. Most of the meetings are pretty small um, as far as you know what's coming out on everything, and it, it's sort of amazing how they're changing up so many uh, different data figures. It's hard to keep up with what is and isn't coming out right now. Uh, the Chicago PMI is also going to come out at 945, so that can have a bit of an impact on the markets, and um, usually not huge, though. And then uh, crude oil inventories, one of my favorite plays, straddling crude oil and crude oil inventories, comes out at 1030 Eastern Time tomorrow. And let's see, what else do we got? Then uh, we're going to go over, China has their PMI, their manufacturing PMI. That's going to be an important number coming out tomorrow night. And uh, we go on forward and we look at, we're going to have ADP non-farm employment change. has been bumped. That's going to be on Thursday, okay? And unemployment claims will be on Thursday. And let's see here, ISM will be on Thursday. And if we go on over to Friday, of course, we're going to have the big employment change, unemployment rate numbers, um, and all that. And unemployment rate, non-farm employment change. So Canada's and ours both coming out on Friday and uh, right here before the elections. So that'll be pretty big. Now, remember... Markets are open tomorrow, okay? So with the markets being open tomorrow, then there's going to be all this catch-up, all these earnings um, you know, that have already come out. There's going to be delayed earnings that are going to be coming out. Uh, you know, the news reports, everything, all catching in, them trying to figure it out. So there could be, you know, there could be quite a bit of volatility tomorrow. And uh, you just, you know, how comfortable do you feel about going in and trading and not getting stopped out? I mean, ask yourself, really, tomorrow morning, how comfortable do you feel about trading going in and not being stopped out of a trade? If you're like, yeah, I am a little bit nervous because who knows what's going to happen after the market's been closed down for two days, that's why Nadex is there. So check it out, okay? Hop on, at least open a demo account. All you got to do is hop on over to tfnn.com. And when you do that, click on Nadex and then go in and you can get a demo account. It's under RX Demo Account, okay? And it takes about 15 seconds. You can sign up and they'll send you an email. You'll be able to log in. You can start playing with that. Also, uh, to get a live account, click on Create Account, and you can fund it with as little as $100, you know, and you can obviously fund it with a whole lot more. Um, but from start to fund, it takes about five minutes. So, you know, before the next segment even starts up on the, the show here, you could literally be funded and ready to go. So it would be a great way for you to see how the market moves and how you can take advantage of that lack of not having to worry about, basically just eliminating getting worried about getting stopped out tomorrow when you're trading with this, you know, volatility coming in to the market. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and our prayers are with everybody out there on the East Coast, and I'll see you tomorrow.